Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 17th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One common problem with network security, of course, is uh, to always sort of chase after the new and shiny thing, the latest vulnerability, and well, in the process of forgetting about a lot of the old vulnerabilities that may be still hanging around. Jan took a look at Shodan to see how many of these older vulnerabilities are still being exposed and well, uh, right uh, towards the top, an interesting remote code execution vulnerability in the IIS web server uh, came up. Not sure if you remember, it was in 2015 when uh, this vulnerability in HTTP.sys uh, was originally uh, discovered. Good thing about this particular vulnerability, and maybe that's sort of what uh, prevents it from getting patched also, is that there have never really been sort of a full remote code execution proof of concept uh, published for uh, this vulnerability. The only exploits that were actually being published were denial of service and information leakage of vulnerabilities. Next uh, couple of 2019 vulnerabilities, the XM vulnerability. NSA, a couple of uh, government agencies have warned about this vulnerability multiple times, but uh, yes, uh, still over a quarter million of vulnerable uh, systems exposed and uh, of course the other 2019 one is a uh, blue keep lastly heartbleed of all vulnerabilities that one was very heavily advertised and people were heavily pushed to patch it still 200,000 machines exposed so the big problem here is we do have uh, hundreds of thousands of unmaintained systems connected uh, to the internet just uh, waiting uh, to be exploited in some form. Hope these are not systems that any of my listeners here are managing, but uh, make sure you're not uh, forgetting to also scan for old vulnerabilities. A lot of uh, vulnerability scanners do a pretty good job with that, but sometimes they sort of uh, drop off some old vulnerabilities from their scans and uh, then an old system getting resurrected and uh, getting exposed may of course make you vulnerable again. Talk about new and shiny vulnerabilities. Uh, we do have patches from Citrix for Citrix virtual apps and desktops. And uh, now uh, this fixes two different vulnerabilities. The first one allows an unprivileged Windows user to actually achieve a system. And uh, this is just improper privilege management. The second one initially sounded more severe, but I don't think it's really that much worse. An unprivileged Windows user, they say, on the VDA or uh, SMB user can perform arbitrary command execution as system. The SMB part here is a little bit interesting, but uh, the attacker does need to be authenticated. So uh, that's sort of one hurdle to overcome, which may or may not be all that difficult depending on your environment. And Zoom is taking additional measures against Zoom bombing. Zoom bombing, of course, refers to unauthorized users joining a Zoom meeting and disrupt them. And this has happened over and over. And a couple new features that Zoom introduced are supposed to help with that. The first feature will suspend all activities. So what it essentially does is it will freeze a meeting. No more video, no more audio will be transmitted and it will allow the host of the meeting to then eject disruptive users and also to report them. And as it turns out, often these Zoom bombings happen after a meeting invite with password 
is shared on social media or other public forums. So Zoom will take additional measures to hopefully proactively find these leaked invites. The way this will work is that Zoom will essentially spider social media. If they find a particular link, they will notify the host of the link and ask them to essentially change the password or be careful about that particular meeting because the information may have leaked. Of course, in some cases, uh, people may intentionally publicly advertise meetings like that. And back in July, Firefox fixed an interesting vulnerability that allowed an attacker to read arbitrary files just by injecting some JavaScript and iframes into the victim's browser. The researcher finding this vulnerability, Petro Oliveira, now published a detailed blog post with proof of concept code illustrating how this vulnerability works and how it could be exploited. Essentially, it's a confusion between file and content URI schemes and uh, how same origin policy is applied in these cases. Fairly tricky vulnerability and a real good write-up. I really commend Petro on waiting a couple months here uh, to fill us in with all the details. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.